You know, the, the, the topic is the heart of the question. And as a Christian, as a Christian, sharing your faith can be hard, eh? You reckon? Has anybody ever found it hard to share their faith? Like the guy in the drama here, he was like, I wish I could be more like you. <laughs> but sometimes we can sort of lose courage. We can sort of, I guess we can, um, what you say, you can sort of, re- be, uh, what's the word, like, like shrink back into your, into your shower and just, you know. And, but you know what? I find that stepping out and sharing your faith actually gives you more courage. <laughs> The more and more you do it, the more courageous you become, the more bold you get, the more um, you learn, and the more you grow in love, to be honest. If anything, I can say from my experience, is the more that I share my faith, is the more that I grow in love. And it's incredible because I don't do it alone, amen? I don't do it alone. I never do it alone because someone is with me always, and that's our Lord and Savior, God Almighty. Amen? So, this morning, I, I want to welcome you if this is your first time here, man. And I'm just so encouraged as well by the teenagers this morning. Hey, just there. Man, you guys, are the, you guys are the next world changers. You guys are the next generation. It's all up to you guys. <laughs> no pressure. Hey? No, I'm just kidding. You guys, you guys uh, have so much potential to change the world, eh? And you just have, I, I, I'm just so encouraged and excited to see what God will do in your lives. Um, I love the, this morning, the dance. Um, that was an incredible piece. Like, what was the lyrics? What are you waiting for? You change the world. I saw um, this move, right? I, see, I think they did this move. Um, they went like this. Sorry, wait. I got to get it right. They went like this, and then I was like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, whoa, that was cool. No. Sorry, guys. I just had to. I couldn't resist. <laughs> All right, so I love this topic. The questions. The heart, I call it the heart of evangelism because that's just me, okay? But we're looking at the heart of the question. When someone asks you a question... Sometimes they can be tough questions. Sometimes you don't have the answer. Sometimes they're easy. Um, sometimes they even challenge me sometimes, like, hey, I need to think about some stuff. But it's, it's an incredible way of evangelism. Sorry, could I pistol somebody for a glass of water, please? Oh, thank you. Um, all right, so before we start this morning, I wanted to begin with a few questions. Right, and this morning, by the way, I'm not going to answer all your questions because <laughs> we'll be here forever, and I'd rather spend forever with God. Yeah. Okay, this morning I want to start with these questions I found, they're really cool. Okay, right, first question How can you drop an egg onto a concrete floor without cracking it? Answer Concrete floors are very hard to crack. Next question. Is it difficult to lift an elephant with one hand? Answer. It would be more difficult to find an elephant that only has one hand. Next question. What is red? What is red and smells like blue paint? Answer. Red paint, of course. What looks like... So, next question. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, because my jokes are dry, eh? Thank you. (laughs) It's okay, I've got a little bit left. The cup is this full, not that. (laughs) Okay. So, next question. What looks like half an apple? Answer, the other half. What is the question? What is the difference between a bird and a fly? Answer, a bird can fly, but a fly cannot bird. <laughs> right, last, last one. 
Last one. What breed of dogs can jump higher than the fence? Answer, all of them, because fences cannot jump. Do you like those questions? <laughs> I had to, yeah, I just couldn't help myself when I found those. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, my throat's dry. Um, anyway, the heart of the question. People ask us tough questions when it comes to faith. When you're sharing your faith and you're trying to tell them about God or about, you know, and questions can come from many places, right? I've, I've noticed that there are three places. Oh, thank you. Am I really that dry? No, thanks, guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Bless you. <laughs> I put it in a safe place. Eh? Okay, right. So questions can come in many different forms, right? But the topic is you've got to get to the heart of the question because questions sometimes are often asked defensively, right? Because <clears throat> sometimes when you're talking to people, they will begin to ask you questions and it's not really to get an answer, but it's really to defend themselves, right? And it's, they're putting up a wall before you to tell you, okay, shut up now. <laughs> and sometimes you've got to pick up when these questions come, right? Well, what about this? What about that? And you'll notice it because they'll, they'll keep switching the question without you really finishing the answer or the conversation or whatever, right? So there are different types of questions, right? The first one is a defensive question where they're trying to protect themselves from a nut job like you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And me too. Okay? Because we're talking about sharing our faith with people who don't believe. Right? Second one is an offensive question. People who are on the offense where they're trying to trap you with a question and they're trying to get you to say something wrong and then they'll be like, see, there you are. I got you. They tried to do that to Jesus, you know that? And they said, what did they ask him about? The taxes? Right? And it says in the Bible, it says, and you can find this in Matthew 22, Matthew chapter 22, verse 15. The, 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 the Pharisees and, the, and that, there was, they said, it says that they set out to trap him, right? So, therefore, they were out and they were like, um, what's the word, like, deliberately asking them a question to try to get him to say something wrong. And they asked him a question, but then Jesus throws a question back at them. You know, he says, why do you try to trap me? And then he throws a question, whose um, image is on this coin? And they said, Caesar. And he said, well, then give to Caesar what is Caesar, and Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. That is the second type of question, offensive questions. Now, these questions can be aggressive, or they can be... I guess you can say piercing questions, right? Okay, is that okay? Right, the next kind of questions are genuine questions where people are actually seeking for an answer. And you will notice these because of the, the emotion behind it, the deep rawness of life, the pain of life, the, the, sometimes it can come in with confusion sometimes. And you will run into people like this all the time. You've got to distinguish what kinds of questions you're being, are being thrown at you. Um, I've met so many um, people who ask questions and tough questions, but I always notice the ones who are asking real questions because there's so much hurt behind it. There's so much confusion. Sometimes they want to know. They want to know. Um, has anybody ever run into any of these kinds of questions yeah if you haven't it's because you're not sharing your faith no I'm kidding I'm kidding guys but the Bible says can you guys see that I can't sorry guys I'll read it out to you but in your hearts revere, revere Christ as Lord always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have but do this with gentleness and respect. Amen? Yeah, amen? 
the Word of God tells us to share our faith, give an answer for the hope that we have. Why do you, I believe? Someone asks you, why do you believe? Why, are you like, why do you have this joy? Why do you have this hope? How? How is it that you are you and I am me? We live in the same world. We see the same things. But how, how are you like that? And how come I'm hurting? How come I don't have joy? How come I don't have peace like you do? How come I don't have hope like you do? And we need to be ready to give an answer, amen? Yeah, I encourage you to be ready to give an answer. And we'll quickly look at it, right? Okay, so, behind every question is a person asking a question. And the important thing about questions is that you're trying to reach the person behind it, right? You're trying to reach the person behind it. Sometimes it's so easy to, to give an answer, a quick answer. Here's your answer, here's your answer. Right? But it does nothing for the person. Because the person is asking out of experience, they're asking out of hurt or pain or fear or um, confusion or whatever. There's always someone behind that question and we need to tend to the person behind it. Amen? It's more important, it is more important to, to reach that person because that person is struggling with something deep inside them. They have a deep struggle to understand things. They have a deep struggle to reconcile how can this world be good or how can God be good when what I see in this world is so evil, so bad, suffering everywhere, poverty everywhere. You will get these questions. If God is so good, then why is there so much suffering? If God is, why this, why that? It's usually because they have something deep within them that they're finding hard to understand or reconcile or, you know. I'll give you an example. Um, I, 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 um, who's, ever, who's ever been told that God does not exist <laughs> in their conversation? Has anybody ever told you that God's not real? Yeah? God's not real? What is the first thing that in your mind that you would naturally do? Is tell them that he is, isn't it? Yeah? Is tell them that he is. I mean, I would. I would. But how about... How about... Instead of giving them answers, try asking questions. Yeah? Sorry, I've skipped my notes and then I come up to you. Um, anyway, so usually the person, the person behind the question is struggling with something spiritual, something emotional, right? Okay? So we need to reach the person behind the question. And we, we can see how to do it the way Jesus did it, right? Jesus, he listened to the heart of the question. Do you remember when um, Nicodemus is asking all these questions and he's saying, we know you're a teacher, but he, and he's, he's asking all these questions and Jesus, you notice he never answered with a, an answer, but he answered with a question. Because he's, what he's doing is he's deflecting the surface stuff and he's trying to reach the deeper things. And he's going, Nicodemus, this is your issue. Or the woman at the well... When the woman at the well, he, he throws her a question. He says, would you give me a drink? And then they have this conversation of backwards and forwards, questions and answers. But Jesus reaches to the deeper things of, in her heart. He says, surely, truly, you have had many husbands. And the husband, you're, the guy you're with now is not your husband. See, he reaches that deep, that deep relationship issue that she had. She was having relational issues. Nicodemus was having, I guess you could say, salvational issues or, you know, issues about am I in the kingdom of God or not? But the way Jesus deals with them is asking questions. And I find it incredible the way he does it, eh? The way he does it. He listens to the heart of the question. 
He listens to the person asking the question rather than listening to the question. And he asks his questions. If you want, like you can just imagine, if someone tells you that they don't believe in God and they give you reasons and they go, why should I believe in God? Why this and that, right? Instead of arguing with them or trying to push your view on them or trying to prove that you are right and they are wrong, try asking a question. What makes you think? What makes you say that? How come you say God's not real? And they could say, whatever. And then you could say, tell me, what is this God like that you don't believe in? Because they'll give you an answer and then they will speak what is in their heart. The reason I don't believe in God is because He's vengeful or He's punished, you know, a God who punishes or whatever like that. You see what I mean? You ask a question, you will get the person's heart, right? And you're tending to the deeper spiritual need in them. You see, someone who, 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 who thinks of God like that, it's because they're trying to escape a vengeful God. And they're doing it by saying God does not exist. And they're trying to find relief from a vengeful God by saying he doesn't exist. He's not real. Because if he is real, then I'm in trouble. Because if he is real, he's going to punish me. Because if he is real, he's going to condemn me. You see, the I don't believe in God is like a plaster over a wound. It's a conclusion that they've come to to escape this God. Ask them, ask them, like, what is it about God that you don't like? What is it about God that you don't... I've asked people that, um, this before. Heaps of people. And they tell me, why does God this and why does God that? I said, oh, what makes you think that God is like that? Or what makes you think that God is... And I've, I've had to learn this over so many years. I used to argue with people. And I used to always... It's never the right thing to do to argue or to prove your point. The better thing to do is just understand the person. Where is this person coming from? Do, are they hurt? Because they probably are. Are they angry? They probably are. Are they confused? They probably are. But what can I do to help? Does that make sense? What can I give to help? People have, have told me this and uh, you know what I always say? I say to them, yeah, I don't believe in that God too. <laughs> I don't believe in that God too. Because that's not my God. My God's not like that, what you're saying. My God is loving. And He's forgiving. He is merciful. He is gracious. Amen? That's my God. He's all powerful. And He's just. Okay. Okay. Respond to the person rather than responding to the question. Amen? Respond to the person rather than responding to the question. Right. Now, for every question that somebody has, some people might have one question. They might ask you one question and you give them the right answer and that might do it for them. That might be like the turning point for them. But some people can have a million questions. Right? And I've, I've called it evangelism because that's what evangelism is like. It's like coming to someone who was fortified with all these questions about God. And it's hard to reach them because they've put this, this wall up. They've put a wall up so that you can't reach them. And they have all these different views, these different reasons why God is this or God is that. But... I praise God that the, the Bible says that our weapons are for the tearing down of strongholds. Things that set itself up against the knowledge of God, right? Thoughts and, and that people perceive about God, we carry the weapons to break those down. 
the things that set, set itself up against the knowledge of God. That is our weapon. Amen? Okay, so this is what, I've, I've put this list up just to share with you how I do things. And you might do things differently. You might do things differently. That's fine. God made you you. He didn't make you me. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm too busy trying to be you, then who's going to be me? <laughs> Amen? If you're trying to be somebody else, who's going to be you? God needs you in his kingdom. Amen? So this is how I do things. I spend time with them. I like to sit down and talk with them. And the first thing I do is ask questions. I ask questions. How are you? What are you doing today? How are you feeling today? And then I go, okay. Okay, if I'm talking to a non-believer, I say, hey, I notice that you are upset or you're tense about something or you're struggling with something. Can I, do you want to talk about it? They might say yes, they might say no. If they say no, I say, okay, I'll pray for you, bro. Right? But if they do say yes, I, I ask them, what's going on? Uh, or do you pray? Do you have faith? Do you believe? I always ask these questions. Right? Sorry, I forgot why I wrote this down. Okay. Also, I spend time and I ask one question at a time. You know, for, like a brick wall, right, for someone who has many questions, just deal with one question at a time, right? Because each question you answer or each question you, um, you deal to in the person's heart, it's like you're taking one brick at a time down. Amen? You imagine someone on another side of a brick wall. How are you going to get to them? You can't. You've got to take these bricks down. And it could be one question at a time. Amen? Does that make sense? Gentleness and respect, we saw that. Don't yell or argue. My own experiences. Sometimes, yeah, I used to yell. <laughs> I used to raise my voice or, nah, you know, but sometimes that could unsettle people. And sometimes it can come across as aggressive. I had to learn that. I had to say sorry to heaps of people too, you know. Um, show them that you care. Show them that you care about them. Say, hey, bro, you know, I don't like to see you like this. I don't like it when I see you like this. It hurts me to see you like this. Offer to pray with them. And if they say no, you offer to pray for them. Say, hey, bro, okay, sweet, I'll pray for you in my own time. I've been denied heaps of times, <laughs> but that's okay, right? Soon enough, there will be no more bricks left, and you can pass through what used to be there and embrace the person in love and say, welcome into the kingdom, my brother <laughs> or sister. You can lead them to the Lord, amen? Um, now this, this, um, this I want to share with you a story about about a guy I met, um, about a guy I met up in um, up the line. I was helping my stepdad uh, do some plastering because because he's an older fella and he's got a he's got a, um, a injured knee, and um, he taught me how to plaster and I plastered with him for years. And he's he was doing a job uh, and the stairway was really high. It was about. You could say it was about up to the top of the screen. And there was a plank going across. And he said, he said to me, he calls me Noi. He says, Noi, can you come help me um, do a job? It's only a small one. And I went to have a look. I said, okay, I'll do the high parts. You do the low parts. Because it's too dangerous for him to stand on a skinny plank with a, with a bowed knee. And so I went in and helped him. And at morning tea, I drove out to get some food. And I, I stopped at this food truck, and I, I brought me a, um, it was a hot dog and a, um, one of those little um, caramel slices. And I said to him, 
nice day. It was, it was windy and raining. No, sorry, it was windy. It was about to rain. Right, it was windy. And I said, nice day, eh? And he goes, yeah. Yeah, not too bad. I said, are you cold in there? Because <laughs> he's got this thing open, you know. He has to stand there all, all morning. I said, are you cold in there, bro? And he goes, yeah. And um, I said to him, so I ordered my food and I said, hey, God bless you, bro. And I went and sat down at the, the picnic table. And about two minutes later, while I was eating my hot dog, he, he came up to me and he said, can I ask you a question, bro? And I said, yeah, sure. He said to me, are you a Christian? And I said, yeah. How did you figure that? Just jokingly. And he goes, oh, no, no. He was about my age. I reckon he was older than me. He looked my age, but I reckon he was about, because I'm 33. He, to me, looked about 37 or something. He's a young um, Māori Pākehā guy. And he said to me, can I ask you a question, bro? I said, what's that? And he goes, so you believe in heaven and hell? And I said, yeah, bro. And he said, can you tell me something? Uh, what's that? He said, why does God send people to hell? Why would God, who was loving, who was this and that, send people to hell? And I asked him a question. I said, what makes you say that, bro? And he told me, oh, it's because of this and that and this and that. And I said, you didn't answer my question. I said, what makes you say that? Not what other people say. What makes you say that God sends people to hell? And he said, oh, I don't know. It's just what I've been told all my life. And if you don't do this, you don't do that, and you're, you're going to go to hell. And so I asked him one more time. I said, bro, just relax. <laughs> I said, what makes you, you yourself personally, believe that God sends people to hell? And he said to me, I don't know. And when, as he said that, I heard the Holy Spirit whisper in my ear over my dead body. Those are the words I heard. Over my dead body. Tell him that. And I said to him, bro, have you ever heard the saying over my dead body? He said, yeah, I use it all the time. <laughs> and I said, bro, people go to hell over God's dead body. People don't go to hell unless they step over the dead body of God. And they go to hell on their own accord. They go to hell by their own choosing. They go to hell. God will never take you to heaven against your will. <laughs> you ever ask anybody that? Next time someone says to you, why does God send people to hell? Then you should ask them, why does God take people to heaven? Is that what you want? You want to go to heaven? If you don't want to go to hell, imagine you in heaven. You know in heaven they worship God 24-7? <laughs> do you want to do that forever? <laughs> Ask them that. You know, he said to me after that, he said, he said, man, and I, and I got to explain to him what Jesus done on the cross. And that people... God doesn't send people to hell. People choose to ignore Him and they choose to reject Him. But God died so that no one should ever go to hell because that is the will of God is that no one should ever, ever perish but have, have everlasting life. And you know what He said to me? He said, oh, I'm sorry, bro. He goes, I'm sorry that, I've, that I've, I seem so like angus. The word he used, angus, <laughs> I said, bro, you must be from my generation. <laughs> but he said, sorry for being so angus, bro. But he said he just lost somebody. He knew someone who just died. And he explained to me that they were a Christian and they were struggling with sin and with stuff in their life. And I said to them, bro, if, they, if Jesus Christ was their savior and they had absolute faith in him, yes, we will struggle with sin in our lives. But if our faith was completely reliant on what Jesus Christ had done on the cross, He is our Savior. Amen? And I said to him, where are you putting your faith? I didn't get to pray for him. I didn't get to talk any longer because I had to rush back to work. And knowing my stepdad, he'd probably bite my head off. And so I said, I'm sorry, bro, I've got to go. I'd love to stay and pray for you, bro. And even if I wanted to, 
that the Spirit of God didn't prompt me to like He normally does. But you see, sometimes when we're doing evangelism and we're dealing with questions, it's okay that you don't answer everything. Amen? It's okay that you don't answer everything. It's okay that you don't know everything. But what must I do? Okay, we must be ready. We must be ready because God might call you to go somewhere that you don't want to go. God might call you to go somewhere that you don't want to be. He might call you to talk to someone you don't want to talk to. He might call, call you and inconvenience you for his kingdom. So we must be ready and willing. Amen? You've got to be ready for God to use you. The second thing, you must be available to God and the person, to God and whoever is around you. You never know what God can do. He'll use you. He will use you wherever you are. Amen? Yeah. The question, the person is more important than the question. So I encourage you to, to absolutely get to know God more, read His Word more, spend time with God more, give up your life more for God. Because the more important thing in this world is to spread the, the, the news, isn't that right? What was the lyrics of the song? I live for no... Guys, who sang the song? Uh, John, where you at, bro? I live for nobody but Jesus. And for the world to see nobody but Jesus? Amen. I live for nobody but Jesus, and I live for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Final thing is, be spirit-filled. <laughs> you cannot do it without the Spirit of God. You absolutely cannot do it without God. Jesus said, you, uh, beside me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. You know the Bible says that nobody can call Jesus Christ Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So when God is doing something in someone's life, He's probably going to tap your shoulder and send you to that person because the Spirit of God is working there and you are a Spirit-filled person who needs to come and put the pieces together in order for this soul to be saved because he might have some questions. Amen? Yeah. He or she might have some questions and God might use you to answer that. Amen? Where am I up to? Be spirit-filled, spirit-led, and spirit-yielded. <laughs> Yielded to God. Yielded, say, okay, Lord, my life is yours. You use me. I will follow you wherever you lead me. Amen? And I wanted to finish with this as well. The cross is the center of our faith. Jesus Christ, what he'd done, the cross, the death, the resurrection, that is what we preach, that is what we share, amen? And I wanted to end with this because I absolutely think it's important. People need our Savior, not our standards. Yeah. Amen? We preach a Savior, not a standard. And be careful because if you are absolutely not careful, your standard will be your saviour. But I know who fits the standard. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. He fulfilled it all. He gave it all up for me and for you and for the lost and the broken. So I encourage you, don't be scared of questions. Question the question. Because... You never know. You never know. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you guys.